Please take your Bible to the book of uh, Daniel chapter 3. And you can do Daniel chapter 3. Yes, I may see that as the word of God, as we read the word of God. We will be reading beginning with verse number 14 down to verse number 18. Um, and the title of the message this morning is True Faith. True Faith. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Sadrach? Meshach and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Or, king, we do not need to answer you about this thing. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast. Uh, our theme for the month of uh, May for this month is uh, Stand for the Truth. You can see it right here. Experience God's great grace to stand for the truth. We cannot stand for the truth without the grace of God. Uh, true faith. True faith is uh, a requisite, and it's very, very important. Now, in the story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or otherwise known as Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's their Babylonian name. The Jewish names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Yun ang kanilang totoong pangalan. This story reminds us that faith will be tested. Faith will be tested. Your faith will be uh, will be tested. So so And the test here is that are they going to worship this idol that was erected by the book of design? It's a huge image actually. Maybe pattern after the the uh, the vision of the book of design in chapter two. And uh, uh, they were they were commanded to uh, to bow down and worship the image. So false faith withers in times of trials. False faith, kung ang ating pananampalataya ay hindi totoo, that will wither, that will fail during times of trial. But true faith takes deeper roots and it will continue to grow. Kung yung ating pananampalataya ay totoo, that will grow deeper. In fact, there is no other way for our faith to grow but for, except for trials. So they are very, very good at point. This explains why the Lord allows us to be tested like Job. You can see those verses in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible tells us about the trials for faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. I'd like to bring you four things this morning. Number one, true faith confronts the challenge. True faith confronts the challenge. You can find that in verse number one down to verse number 12. Now, what will you do? What will you do if you were 
Sobrang mess up ka ng birthday ko. What will you do? What will you do? Because the king's command is very, very, uh, very, very clear. Failure to worship the idol that he erected would mean that they would be thrown into the burning fire for nice. That was not a joke. Now, what would you do? Now, we learn from this story that true faith is not frightened by threats, no matter how terrifying. True faith is not frightened by threats, no matter how terrifying. Kapag ang iyong panampalatay ay totoo, hindi matatakot ka. Maari may takot din, pero mangingibabaw yung iyong tayo. Maybe you will fear, you will have some fears, but your 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 courage will will um, will prevail. True faith obeys the Lord and trusts Him to work out um, His plans or the consequences. My question for you this morning is: Do you have true faith? In Daniel chapter six, verse number ten, we we read of the story of Daniel. Because in Daniel chapter 3, it was Sadrach, Mesa, and Abednego. But my question is, where was Daniel? Why was he not with the group? Why was King Sadrach, Mesa, and Abednego only who were thrown into the burning fire for days? But in Daniel chapter 6, we see that uh, Daniel had his share. Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 10, the Bible says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, what was the writing? The writing says that if you worship, that if you pray to your God, you will be thrown into the den of lions. That was the law. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, look at this. If you are in his shoes, if you are Daniel, what would you do? What would you do? The Bible tells us he went into his house and with his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled down upon his knees and three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This was already Daniel's practice. Let me ask you, would you be terrified? Be honest with me now. Would you be afraid? Huh? Would you be afraid if you were Daniel? Yeah. To pray? Nobody will pray. The king just signed the decree. Of course, it was drafted by those men who hated the Daniel and they wanted to get rid of him. But a, a decree has been signed that nobody can pray except Pharaoh. Except the king, except the Mughal Isra, I should say. But here, we find Daniel, he opened his windows and he prayed. The Bible says here three times a day, as he, uh, as he did a fourth time. Somebody said, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing right in spite of fear. Do your fears, of course we do. But the difference between a courageous Christian and a poor Christian is that a courageous Christian will do what is right in spite of fear. Amen. You know, it's if we are in a, in this part of the world, you know, we don't have freedom yet. Some people would not want to go to church. Why? Because they are afraid. Some people would not serve God, they would not go out on Bible study. Why? Because they have allowed their fear from keeping them to do what God wants them to do. So there is, there is fear. But you know what Daniel did? He went home and he opened his windows. And look at verse number 21 and 22. I hope you will read the, 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 the entire chapter when you go home. Then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. He is now into the lion's den. He was thrown into the lion's den. Because of praying to his God. And he said here, O King, forever my God had sent his angel and had shut the lion's mouth, 
that they are not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was following me and also before the oaking have I done no hurt do you see here Daniel did not allow his fear to keep him from doing what is right now what challenges are you facing today what challenges are you facing today are you allowing your fear to keep you from doing what God wants you to do? You don't come to church because you are in a Muslim country and you're, you're afraid that maybe you will... I've told you this before, I hope if they ever come here, I hope they, they just take them, uh, let them do whatever they want to do with me and just send you to them. Amen. Amen? That means, that means you, you are... <laughs> 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 what the Lord is... Uh, I mean, just there we go. But what challenges are you facing today? The Bible says, fear thou not. We just have to do what is right and trust the Lord. Amen. Amen? So true faith confronts the challenge. We are not afraid to face the challenge. I have made up my mind. We are in a, in a, in a part of the world where we do not have the freedom we enjoy the freedom. But I have come to the cost. If they take me and let them do whatever they want. Yeah, I want to experience what the martyrs had experienced during the early days. Uh, but true faith confronts the challenges. You do not shy away, you do not run away simply because there are threats. The second thing that we see here, true faith confesses the word. True faith confesses the word. One, it confronts the challenge. True faith will face the, the challenge. That means fear or courageous is not the absence of fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing what is right in spite of fear. The difference between a coward and a courageous person is a poor person allows his fear to keep him from doing what's right. A courageous person will still do what's right in spite of his fear. Now true faith confesses the Lord. Now notice with me the two implications in Nebuchadnezzar's question. But you cannot in yung verse number 15. Last part of verse number 15. Here is Nebuchadnezzar. He is the first emperor of the world. He is so powerful, he has control over the world. Look at this question that is found in chapter 3, verse number 15, the last part. This is what he said, And who is the God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Yaman, who is the God who is able to deliver you out of my hands? Well, if you read the remaining verses you will find out that he answered his own question in verse number 26 then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire for nation spake unto Sadrach and said Sadrach, Mesa, and Abednego ye servants of the most high God you know through faith acknowledges who the Lord who the Lord is and discloses what he can do True faith acknowledges ang totoong pananampalataya at kinikilala mo kung sino ang Panginoon at kung ano yung tayong gawin ng Panginoon. You acknowledge who God is and what He can do. Amen? Amen. That is true faith. That is true faith. Let's go back to Daniel chapter 2. Okay? Daniel chapter 2. Verses 26 to 28. You remember this story? Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. But he forgot about this dream. Have, have you had a dream? And you have forgotten about your dream? I dream about something, but I can't remember what my dream was. Well, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he was troubled by this dream and he called for all the magicians, but the problem is he forgot about his dream. 
And he wants the wise men to tell him his dream and the interpretation of his dream. And the wise men will say, just tell us your dream, we will give you the interpretation. But the woman himself said, no, I've forgotten about my dream. You have to tell me my dreams. If not, you will pay the consequence. Look at verse number 17. Or let's go to uh, verse number 26. Go to verse number 26. Uh, down to verse number 28. And the king answered and said unto the eagle, whose name was Melchizedek, Art thou able to make unto me the dream which I have seen and the, inter and the interpretation thereof? The eagle answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king. He is saying, Nobody can give you what you are asking for. But look at verse number 28 and see what he said. But there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that there is a God in heaven? Amen. Do you believe that the God in heaven is the omniscient God? Amen. The omnipotent God? Amen. He is all knowing, He is all powerful. <laughs> the angel said there is a God in heaven. That reveal our secrets and make no make it known unto the king of Bukadisar what shall be in the latter day. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy head are this. So we find Daniel telling the king what he what his dream was. In chapter 6 and verse number 22. Chapter 6 and verse number 22, look at the Bible, verse number 22. The Bible says here, My God hath sent his angel. And the chef the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him, even he was following me, and also before the Oki, have I done no hurt. You see this? He could, they confess the Lord. Joseph in Genesis chapter 1, you see the same thing when he stood before Pharaoh. They confess the Lord. Now, when going through trials, remind yourself. Who your God is and what He can do. I'm sure you are going through times of trials in your life. We have to remind ourselves who our God is. Our God is a powerful God. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. See? Remind yourself of who your God is and what He can do. God is a great God. Amen? Amen? Just do what is right. Our attitude during trials is an announcement of who our God is. You have a great God. Maybe you are here today and uh, uh, you are having a, an issue probably with your job. You are afraid that you may lose your job. My friend, God knows what you are going through. God knows what you are going through. If no, if God doesn't want you to lose the job, you won't lose the job. If you ever lose the job, maybe God has a bigger job for you to do. Amen? Amen. Maybe God wants you to serve him in the full time service. Amen. Okay. Number three, what do we learn here? True faith confounds the enemy. True faith confounds the enemy. We find that in verses 19 down to verse number 25. <laughs> True faith will reveal the power of the Lord and the effectiveness of faith in Him. True faith will reveal the power of the Lord. We find that in the story here. From verse number 19 down to verse number 25. You can see that here. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was so angry when uh, these three heavenly children answered him. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Have you seen somebody get so mad? Their face begin to change, you know? Somebody said, a man that is filled with fury is filled with fire. A man that is filled with fury is filled with fire. And so he was so mad, therefore he, he spake and commanded that they should uh, hit the furnace of uh, one seven times more than it was want to be heated. They heated the furnace seven times. So if you hate somebody and you want to torture somebody, why will you heat the furnace seven times? 
they were laying something. And the Bible tells us here in verse number 20, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fire before the And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their uh, other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fire for nights. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the uh, furnace is sitting hot, and the flame of the fire is you, those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what lesson we can learn from that? Do not make decisions when you are mad. Why? Because you will make the wrong decision. He was so angry, he was so mad when, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gave, them, gave him the answer. And so they hit the furnace seven times and he commanded his mighty men to throw, to cast the darkness and abandon into the burning fire of the and they ended up dying. He knows his best man. Folks, when you are mad, do not make decisions. When you are angry, don't say anything. Because the things you will say is wrong. When you are mad, be careful with talking to your wife or your husband because the things you will say is meant to hurt the other person. Never say anything, never do anything when you are mad. Somebody says, if you are mad, you count one to ten. If you are very mad, you count one to one hundred. If you are very, very, very mad, you count and never stop counting. That's a good idea. See? But true faith will reveal the power of the Lord and the effectiveness of faith in Him. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed God. Amen? Are you with me today? Yeah. They believed in the power of God. And you know what? True faith will also reverse the skeptic's view of the Lord. It will reverse. It will change their, uh, their, their, uh, their thinking of who God is. It will change the, the way of their thinking. You know, look at the Bible says here. What did what did Nebuchadnezzar say? What did he say? He gave them a second chance. He said, okay, next time when you hear the sound of the instruments, he said, you better bow down. Otherwise, you will be cast into the burning for the fire for the nation. He said, and who is that God? That's a delivery all to my hands. You see how proud he was? He thought he was greater than God. He did not know God. You know? And later on, what did he say here? Verse number 26. You compare that. He said, Who is that God that is able to do the delivery all to my hands? And look at his answer in verse number 26. He is servants of the Most High God. He answered his own question. See, it will reverse the skeptic's view of the Lord. Ang akala kasi kina bukan ni Sarah. Ang Diyos ni Sadrach, Mesa, and Bendigo. Parang yung Diyos niya rin. I'm telling you, our God is different from the God of this world. Our God is an omnipotent God. There is nothing impossible without God. Look at your Bible, please, in Psalms chapter 115. Let's turn them for a while. Psalms 115. You know, this is a, I really love this verse. Look at this verse. Verses. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto a name, name, give glory for mercy and for the truth's sake. What for to the heathen say, who is now the God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he had pleased. That's all God. Amen? Amen. Now on the contrary, the idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. They have mouth, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They don't make them unlike unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. And if you will read the remaining portions of the story, it tells us who our God is. Our God is a powerful God. Amen? Amen. You have a powerful God. 
We have a powerful God. Know your Bible. Go back to Daniel chapter 2. Verses 17 down to verse 19. Daniel chapter 2 verses uh, 17 to 19. Daniel went into his house. This is the time when uh, Nebuchadnezzar had his dream, you know. Uh, we read earlier. But he forgot about his dream. It troubled him. He cannot go to sleep. And so he asked for all the wise men to tell him his dream and the interpretation of his dream. And so the wise men were saying, just tell us your dream. Sabihin mo lang sa aking panaginip mo, kami nang bahala sa interpretation. But the king had forgotten about his dream. And so he wanted to destroy all the wise men in his kingdom, including Daniel and his friends. Well, Daniel and his friends made this request, and Daniel went into his house and made the thing known unto Hananiah, Mishael, and Zariah, his companions. They had a prayer meeting. That they should decide the mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret. And Daniel and his fellows, that Daniel and his fellows should have perished with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Lord, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. You know what lesson we can learn from here? Do you know that God answers prayer? Yeah. God answers your prayer. Maybe you have a problem here this morning. Maybe you have a problem with your relationship. Maybe you have a problem with your health. Maybe you have a problem with your family. Maybe you have a problem with your work. Whatever problem you have, my friend, I'm here to tell you today that God hears and answers prayer. Amen. And what did they do here? You know, God revealed it to them. Look at verse number 23. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now that uh, what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. God revealed it unto to Daniel. You know what? And I could just read another quick. God hears and answers prayer. Amen? Amen? Your trials is a powerful tool to prove to your enemy that your God is real. True faith confounds the enemy. True faith confounds the enemy. True faith confronts the talents. True faith confesses the Lord. And number three, true faith confounds the enemy. Nebuchadnezzar can say nothing here. You have other verses in your notes and share. Please read those when you go home. Number four, the last. True faith confirms God's promises. True faith confirms God's promises. Yung ating pananampalataya that will confirm the promises of the Lord. The Lord cares for His people. And honors them when they are true to Him. Amen. Do you agree with that? Amen. The Lord cares for His people. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us and honors them when they are true to Him. Don't expect, expect God to bless you if you are not true to Him, if you are not faithful to Him. The Lord promised to help them and always be with them. May pangako ang Panginoon dyan. The Lord promised to help them and always be with them. The Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are verses in your notes. I, I challenge you to read those verses when you go home. But let us look at first Samuel. First Samuel in your, in your Bibles. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. Let's look at this verse. Amen. Yeah. First, Samuel chapter 12, verse number 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and, thy, and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me will I honor. Folks, all you have to do is honor the Lord. And they that despise me shall be likely esteemed. You see that? Daniel and his friends, they honor the Lord. And because they honor the Lord, the Lord honored them as well. 
Hello, Bolo. And I can give you other illustrations. But I have a question for you this morning. Was God true to his promises to Daniel and his friends? You know what? God does not lie. God is always true. God was true to his promises to Daniel and his friends. And you know what? The Lord will also be true to you. The Lord will also be true to you. He, he was even true to his promise in the garden when man had fallen into sin. You know what the promise of the Lord was? When Adam and Eve had fallen into sin, God promised to send a, a Messiah. And God was true to that. Amen? Amen. Folks, face your trials with courage because we will face more and intensified ones as we live for God. Itong makikita natin itong, itong makakaibigan dito. They face their trials with courage. You will be having drug issues, health concerns, persecutions, and impediment. But you know what? If the Lord is with us, no one can be against us. Pray for more grace. You pray for courage and faith and wisdom. In an age when others are bowing their knees to the God of this world, we need Christians like this man here, Daniel and his friends, who will stand for that. Be true to your God. And the Lord will be true to you. Maging tuto tayo sa Panginoon. Amen? And once you are serving the Lord, and once you feel that, you have, you have, you don't feel anymore. Because the Lord will never leave you, and He will never forsake you. Now we have the Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for the simple message, Lord, that you have given us. Lord, you have taught us this morning about what true faith is all about. We have the example of these heavenly children here, Ananaya and Misala Nazaraya, they had faith and it was a true faith. A true faith that confronts the challenge, that faces the challenge with courage. A faith that confesses the Lord and not be ashamed of who we are and who our Lord is. A faith that confounds the end. A faith that will defeat the end. And a faith that will confirm your promises to our lives. Lord, thank you for the promise that you have given us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we see this man being thrown into the burning fire for this. But Lord, you were true to them. You walk with them in the burning fire for us. And Lord, we know that you will always be true to your promises to us as well. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you. Help us, Lord, to serve you no matter what happens. Because we know that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Help us to have the courage that they have. Help us to have the determination that they have. To serve you not only in good times, but even in dangerous times. Lord, we need that courage from you. We can only do that by your grace. Bless even as we have the invitation tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. While I've heard about the race of close no one is looking around, who among you would say this morning, Pastor, somewhere in the message, God spoke to my heart. God spoke to your heart about the message. Are you are you faithful to the Lord? Are you true to the Lord? Are you only good in serving the Lord when all things are well? But what about during times of, of dangers, during times of trial? Will you still serve the Lord?